Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, StatCrunch tutorial on performing hypothesis tests and confidence intervals regarding two proportions. Uh, so to use StatCrunch again if you're in your homework assignment something like this and uh, you need to use the StatCrunch here. Uh, here we're given some summary data so here we're asked to determine the null and the alternative hypothesis. So kind of given this right here so we can easily see that this is the alternative hypothesis and we already know from prior discussion that the null hypothesis is always involving an equal sign so uh, all we have to do is just kind of come through and check and make sure we choose the appropriate one so this one here we get our green box what pow hey great job so now we have to compute the Z test statistics so now we have to come over and fire up StatCrunch, so let's do that. So we'll click on the question help, come over here to our StatCrunch, and we'll let it fire up. Again, if you guys have problems or issues with this, you might have to clear your browser out. I uh, haven't been receiving very many emails, so hopefully uh, you, you, you've kind of got that part taken care of yourself. So here we'll come over here to Stats. Better get the rest of our menu in here. So we have stats, we have two samples, and in this case we have summary. So I'm going to go ahead and choose summary. I'll slide that window over here. And uh, let's see, can I? Yeah, we'll just tile this to the left of the screen. We'll have that guy right there, see how this works for us. All right, so the number of successes. So come over here, I'll enter in 30. Then we'll come down here and enter 254. And number of successes is 36. And number of observations here is 302. All right, so we're doing a hypothesis test, so we're going to test this one here. And notice that the way StatCrunch does it, it does it in terms of differences. So all you have to do is come over here, and it's always bringing P2 to the other side. So notice our null hypothesis then becomes P1 minus P2 equals zero. And over here it's P1 minus P2 does not equal zero. So recall, you just bring the P2s over. And when we get to means and we work with means, it'll be uh, bring mu2 over. All right, so we have, I think everything is set up the way it's supposed to be regarding the null and the alternative. So we'll just go ahead and click compute. And here we have our output window here. So it's asking for the test statistic rounding to two decimal places. So here we get a negative, uh, looks like negative zero point, uh, looks like zero four, rounding to two decimal places. Check our answer. Well, pow, we got the green box. Uh, the P value, well, that's right here. It looks like we're asked to round to three decimal places, so 0.968. And again, check our answer. And ding, 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 we are doing really good. So based on the large p-value, we know we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so I believe last week for closing out the previous week's discussion, uh, you might want to note some comments that I made to the summaries. Uh, so here we're going to fail to reject. So we got option A is fail to reject option B. So do not reject the null because there is sufficient evidence. Well, if we to conclude that there's a P1 is bigger than P2, well, when we fail to reject, that shows insufficient evidence to support the alternative. So notice down here, fail to reject the null because there is not sufficient evidence to conclude. So we'll check that one, see what we get. Green box, ding, ding, ding. Next question. So let's move on to the next question where this one is going to ask us to compute a confidence interval for the difference in two proportions. So let's just note that when we do the difference in two proportions and we do these confidence intervals, uh, just keep in mind that these intervals, they come out kind of weird. They're not really very intuitive. 
like our intervals were in the previous uh, that we previously observed. So here we'll come down here, proportion stats, two sample, and here we have summary. So the number of successes here is 25. Uh, the number of trials is 242. Uh, let's see, sample two, we get 32 and 322. And come down here and our confidence level is uh, what do we got? 99. There it is. 99. All right. So let's ding, ding, click the button here. So notice our difference is right here. And then notice our lower and upper limit. So notice we get a negative. So the confidence intervals, you just got to remember they're on the difference of proportions, not on the proportions themselves. So here we'll just put in we are or the researchers are 99% confidence that the difference between the two population proportions is between, and what do we have? It says to round to three decimal places. So negative 0 0.062. So negative 0 0.062. And our next one is 0 0.070. Check our answer. Let's see how we do. Ding, ding, ding. We got the green box. Off to our... All right. So here we're going to take a look at sample size computation. So a physical therapist wants to determine the difference in the proportion of men and women who participate in regular sustained physical activity. What sample size should be obtained if he wishes to estimate within five percentage point with 99% confidence. Uh, so again, notice that we have the two cases just like we did with a single proportion. So we have prior estimates and non-prior estimates. So let's just come over here and let's fire up our stat crunch. Okay, and here we'll come over here to proportions. Uh, stats will do two samples and again I'm just going to choose this width sample size and here we have our confidence level is going to be 0.99 and our first proportion estimate is going to be and let's remember these 0.5s we're going to see those again here in just a second so we'll just remember these 0.5s so our first one is 0.229 and our second one is 0.189. And remember the width, we have to double the width, just like we did before. So here we have a percentage of five percentage points. So we want our percentage points now to be 0 0.1. And we'll leave this box so it knows what to compute. Uh, oh, I think I got a double. It, we got the wrong box. Here we go. So compute what? I don't know why we got some double decimals in here. It's crazy. So here we go. See it happens. We make oopses once in a while. Uh, here we get 876. So let's check it out. 876. Check our answer. Hopefully we get the right green box. Well, pow, there it is. All right, so now we're going to do part B, no prior estimates. So remember, you have to use that ugly looking one, uh, but uh, a real long one. So here we'll put in a 0.5 for this one and a 0.5 uh, for this one. And we'll do again 0 0.1. Now remember stat crunch. They, it's just the way it does its computation. It's a little bit different. And again, we'll compute our sample size. So over here it's saying for a point zero nine nine nine. So we get a nice, we don't have to do any rounding. So it kind of modifies this for us. So 1327. And let's go ahead and check our answer here. And next question. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that helps you out on performing um, 
what do we have? Hypothesis tests for two proportions, confidence intervals for two proportions, and sample size computations for two proportions. All right, so that'll do it. See you in the classroom.